The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Fortenza Vibrance Max Plus Saltro. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. We are well into harvest and growers are pushing to get soybeans out of the field. On this episode, I'm catching up with Horst Bonner, Omafra's soybean specialist. We're going to talk about variety maturity and planting date and how they combine to impact harvest date. Here's Horst Bonner. Horst, when I talk to growers, there seems to be a lot of confusion about maturity groups. How do you distinguish between maturity groups? So you're right, Bernard. Uh, A number of years ago, we shifted from using crop heat units to maturity groups for soybeans. And the basic difference is that crop heat units only really use temperature to define how much growth a plant can have, right? And with the maturity grouping system that we use in soybeans, it takes into account the photo period effect or how long the days are because we know that soybeans can adjust, of course, to the season based on day length. And so this is an American system And uh, what they did is they grouped soybeans that mature relatively at the same time. So if you have a maturity group one, for instance, that's where we would be right now, that's about a 2800 heat unit. But again, the heat unit is, is not the best way to describe it. So that's why we've gone to these maturity groups right? And so um, a maturity group zero is obviously shorter. And then the strange thing about it is it goes not to negative numbers, but it goes to double zero or triple zero. And and the simple reason for that is it sounds ridiculous, but the simple reason for that is um, when they first came up with the system, they thought it would go from one to 10 and that would be it. They never conceived of the fact that we would grow soybeans that are so short. And so uh, somebody decided that negatives couldn't be used. So they used these double zero, triple zero. Now we have four zeros, right? So that's how the system works. Um, and basically, you know, the difference between a group one bean and a group two beans in the fall is about six to 10 days. So we use that each decimal point difference is about one day maturity difference in the fall, roughly speaking. What about, again, the difference between a group? I mean, you know, uh, six to 10 days between, uh, you know, a one and a two, for example, but within that group, there's gotta be, you know, some, some play as well. Oh, absolutely. And so that's why we do use the decimal points, right? So right here where I'm standing, I would consider this a well-adapted bean. This is a 0.9 maturity group for where we are today. It's the middle of September. And these beans are real close to finishing. You can open them up, you can crack them, even the top ones, perfect. Right on this side, these are a 1.2. And you can see that they're almost there, but there's more green in there, obviously, right? So according to the system, they should be about three days behind. Ah, whatever, maybe it's seven days, but certainly they're in the right ballpark in terms of being behind. Now, over there, those green ones, now these were all planted on the same day here, that's important to know, April 26th. Those are a 1.8 maturity group, right? So that's a whole, 10 days later, and I would guess today that they might even be a little bit more. Now, here's the interesting part. Okay, here we are. We're thinking about planting wheat already. You know, we want to get these beans off. How can we make sure that the beans are ready in a good, timely fashion year in and year out? Well, what we recommend is that you plant something even shorter than adapted. And if you look over there, we have some 0.5 maturity beans and they're ready to go. You could harvest them this afternoon and uh, plant your wheat, right? So that's why we talk about planting something that's half a maturity group or maybe even one full maturity group earlier. Okay, Horst, I get maturity groups now. But how does planting date impact that maturity and harvest at the end of the season? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. Planting date is extremely important. These April 26th beans will finish much earlier than the more typical, we have a May 18th planting date. 
And so there's a three week difference there, right? And we would expect that there would be only about a one week difference in terms of finally uh, finishing those beans in the fall. It's kind of a three to one ratio. And that's because of the photo period effect. So in trials that have been done on a variety that's adapted in your zone, if it's more than a zero, if it's a one or two or three, um, if you plant a month later, it will finish up almost 15 days faster in terms of that R1 to R6. So everything is sp sped up in terms of those growth phases. Now, the, the other interesting part about that conversation is if it's a very short season bean, like a double zero or even a zero, those beans are basically like corn. They're not photo period sensitive at all anymore because they, they, they try and finish up so quickly, right? They just don't have time to adjust. Now, we also have a June 15th date. You know, and in our trials, our long-term trials, some, some years, that will yield 15 bushels less than what we have here, right? It was seeded seven weeks later this year. So it'll be really neat to see how much later it is in terms of maturity. But my guess is two to three weeks later. And you can see by looking at these beans, they're green as grass, even though they're adapted for here. But planting date is so important. So the take home message is the variety selection is extremely important, but planting date is equally important in terms of trying to get those beans to finish in a good time in the fall. Hey Horst, some great insights. Thanks for stopping by. Always great to have you on the Soybean School. Thank you. I appreciate the time. It's been fun once again. Take care.